uh, I can talk about a movie. I didn't do much other than play a little bit more Aiden. Uh, I can also talk about a movie. Or is it the same movie? Uh, I don't know. Was yours animated? Was it Disney? It was Pixar. Er? No, <laughs> they're both. Not they're both. Both things are true, Michael. That's not you. <laughs> you. That's not fair. <laughs> I was. I was specifying. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure we're talking about the same one. If you saw it in a theater. Yes. All right. We're good. Uh, I can. T- uh, JJ, go ahead. How you guys doing? Doing all right. Yeah. I am sorry I'm a little late today. Um, Katie and I have decided that we would like to be poor people. And uh, uh, and we were sitting there debating uh, Windows. And I don't mean the Microsoft program. Mm. I mean, uh. we, we finally have quotes to replace all the Windows on this. Ha- we could just do the Hello. Welcome to a yeah, podcast. I oh. uh, guess about a- there we go. Yeah. Uh we talk about this kind of stuff. Is this a this is um what do you call it, Michael? Leveling up? No. Adulting. Is that your The Adulting Minute? Yeah. Yeah, I thought we renamed that to leveling up. Okay. What is th- what is the part of Aiden called when you run out of money and you can't upgrade your uh, equipment anymore? That's the, the part entire that I, game. The entire that's, game. That's, that's, that's the part of my life that I'm in. <laughs> uh, cool. Very relatable. Yeah. So now we've tied it all together. Video games and uh, uh, adult level minutes. Um, I knew they would cost roughly this amount of money. So it was not a surprise. Um, there are multiple companies out there and Hey, you know, that little adage about you should get three quotes is kind of Mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. The problem with getting three quotes nowadays is that when you're getting three quotes about roughly the same thing, it comes down to what the products are made of and therefore what you think you're getting out of the three different quotes. Because if you did three different quotes of exactly the same thing, they're almost all identical. You know what I mean? Well, unless it's like, you know, it, for it depends what the quote is for, right? If there's a bunch of labor involved, then sometimes the quotes vary. But typically, if you're like, do this one specific task, yeah, they're going to give you the same quotes, right? So, for instance, with these windows, um, when replacing windows with just standard ish vinyl windows, even if they're from different brands, the install prices are roughly equivalent. It's, it's almost right. all down to a hundred dollars a window from everyone, you know, in our local area. Um, yeah. If you get an installer from somewhere else farther away, they lower those costs a little bit. So, um, you know, I mean, it, then you add in things like, going for a higher end brand. What do they cost? What do you get from them? Oh, you can do 15 different things with a window. Do I need to do 15 different things with a window? How poor do I want to be really? Well, the important thing is going from old windows to new nice windows will drastically change the amount of heating and cooling you have to do in your house. Yeah. Like impressively. Now, you know, that doesn't help if you don't do all of the windows in the whole house, that but it definitely, definitely helps yeah. some. Yeah, I think I think we kind of nearly have an answer here, but um, it's funny to think about how do you guys ever do this thinking about things in terms of the X value versus the hard hard value? So what I mean by that is like um, the. Uh, 3070 and the 3080. The 3070 costs, uh, let's ball ballpark these things, right? $700 and the 3080 costs $1,000, right? That's the easy numbers for us to go with. Sure. Okay. So, uh, math, some math genius. Um, 
uh uh what uh, 70 uh well, 100 is 1.4 x 70 right roughly or 1.5 x 70 ish so do you think with a 3080 you're getting 50 percent more product do you think with the 3080 you're getting $300 more product? That's what I mean about the X value versus the hard currency value. The hard value. I mean, it's, like, it's like just barely over 1.3 X, but yes. Oh, I, okay. I, you're thinking of like, what you're really describing is the like, the value increase from the next step down versus having to pay, you know, just what the price is. Right. Right. It's like, how much is it worth over the next best thing? Uh, and and that comes in to factoring with like and with everything, right? What is the quality change in the item? What is the quality of life change in the item? And so, like when we were, I think we talked on this podcast. This is getting long winded about this, but we talked on this podcast, and maybe it's helpful for people to hear this type of stuff as you get into this stage of your life. Um, the washing machine that we bought was some amount of dollars more, but when you think about what appreciably the differences in certain items can be and what that amount of money is amortized over time, it becomes either negligible or not important, right? Versus the value you gain from the item and the change in the item. Right. Um, or even sometimes if you're buying something that is purely entertainment, I think I used an example earlier today of like a Hasbro kids lightsaber versus the one you get at Disneyland like that has no appreciable value change to your life except for the fact that when you look at it you do feel that it is more than 3x the the value in the item right um so for some people that won't be true but but for the people that care it is true um yeah. you just have to be careful that you're not using that excuse to convince yourself to buy something you don't need just oh, because you can yeah. amortize it over infinite time and ah, all of a sudden it's this is worth it right yeah that's the that's the only fallback of that approach because like it's totally valid right and, and definitely that, like a good idea yeah that's the pitfall of not always looking at multiple avenues of of differences of value like what is the how much more dollars how much more percent how much more amortized how much more over x time right uh, with a home it's very easy you say how long do you think we're going to live here okay you can only amortize over that amount of time or the life of the product even like a then, washing machine well, like, doesn't last a hundred years and there's also things like you have to take into account with a home like is this going to increase the property value such that when i eventually leave or sell it or whatever this money will have been made up or, right? or is it? Yeah. Is there appreciable difference between these two items in property value? And cause like sometimes despite it giving a huge benefit to you, the person living there, it's worth literally nothing to the property value. Right. Mm -hmm. And then other things are the exact opposite. It's like, this is kind of the same as what I had, but Oh my God, all of a sudden now this sells for, you know, way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's enough about that. Uh, sometime soon I'll be able to report how poor we are. <sighs> there is a there is a good news in like buying things that are more expensive. I bought a printer during the pandemic and I spent up to get a nicer Canon printer. Uh we went to one of those tank style printers. The kind the refillable kind? Yeah, where you basically get a bottle of ink and you just dump it in the printer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh and I went up to a quality version of that that was like higher. And this past week I was printing stuff and it was just not printing red ink. And the thing of red ink is full, clearly, right? Um, but because of it being a nicer style, this style of printer, all you had to do was just run the nozzle cleaning thing. Bang, whole thing fixed. Like, no problems, no cartridge issues, no nothing. No having to replace anything. Just, oh, hey, you know what? I'm a little, I'm a little clogged up, you know? <laughs> Printer ink still a scam, but that's less scammy than the other way. <laughs> it is dollars and cents wise less scammy. Yes, I think uh, per people out there do the math of the per sheet things. Um, mm -hmm. 
I've been really, I've been sitting with this printer and uh, story here for a little while longer than I should, because I've been trying to tie it into something else. I'm working <laughs> on a transition. Just give me another second here. Uh, but you know, the tankless things kind of new technology. And sometimes when you have new technology, it malfunctions and you crash on an alien planet. Right, Michael? Oh, I was going to say PC load letter. PC. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh yeah sometimes sometimes you uh you misjudge the the climb out of the canyon and uh ruin your spaceship do you misjudge it or did you not ask for help you didn't ask for help yeah yeah what jj i don't know what the hell we're talking about <laughs> buzz buzz light year to the rescue buddy oh okay that movie that didn't need to be made got it oh ouch wow did, did we need to have a backstory for the toy in the, it's, the uh, toy story movie can i hold on spoiler warning mm -hmm. you ready it's about the person buzz lightyear that the toy is based no, on no it has nothing to do with That's it it is, it is you are nope nope it is not the backstory for the toy okay yeah it's just Please, a separate feel free thing to, entirely um uh, okay they they, they use the characters, but like even in the movie, they make a joke. Um, this is a lot of spoilers here. So if you don't want to hear this, skip ahead 10 minutes or so. And if we're not done, I'll look at the clock in 10 minutes and warn people that we're not done. But uh, there's a joke in there, Michael. I don't know if you caught it where Zerg uh, opens up the containment unit and he goes, Dad? Yeah. Uh, which is a joke, right? Because Zerg in the toys and the storyline of the toys and the cartoon and all that stuff was uh, his father. Uh, so that's the joke of, oh, no, this story is just its own thing. So the joke, it, the joke isn't that that's exactly the plot of Star Wars. The, no, the joke in Toy Story is that that's the exact plot oh, of Star Wars. Oh, yeah. okay, 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 got it. The, yeah. joke, the joke in Toy Story is here. that they ripped off Star Wars. The joke yes, in okay. this movie is like, no, we're not just making the backstory for the toys. This is just its own thing. I'm just making sure I didn't, like, miss something important in Toy no. Story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is... I haven't and seen that's it in a mean. while. I it's don't just, remember that. It's just completely unrelated to Toy Story in its entirety as far as i was concerned i don't know if michael got a different impression well there was the there was the opening the dialogue at the very beginning uh run jj through it i guess oh. yeah so the dialogue at the very beginning says that it does reference toy story and it says that uh in the movie toy story um buzz lightyear was andy's favorite toy um and it was based on a movie and then it says this is that movie oh I guess I missed that part. I did walk in two minutes late. Ah, uh, so yeah, it was bum, it was bum. literally the first thing. Uh, so I I'm I walked in literally two minutes late. Uh, because, buddy, theaters don't expect people anymore. I don't know about uh, your did theater. You get, did you ours get caught was, at the line trying ours, to order tickets from? Concessions? Yeah, ours was bombarded with people. Not most of them were there for this movie. Most of them were there for Top Gun showings. Sure. Um, but yeah, they they had not nearly enough people. But I, I mean, I, I saw the whole movie movie. I just, I guess I missed that Toy Story voiceover. I don't know. I guess I have to eat crow and say that it is related to Toy Story here. Uh, I got the impression that it wasn't because he says it's his dad, but it's not his dad. So, you know. They changed it in the cartoon. I don't know who can. At the they, end of the day, look, you guys have whatever opinion you want. I didn't see the movie. Uh, you well, guys can tell uh, me what it was. I'll just say it doesn't matter if it's related to Toy Story at all. It could be or it could not be. It wouldn't change the movie any. Yeah, kid. You know, kids today aren't necessarily gonna gonna know Toy Story. Yeah, that's I mean, also you, very true, right? Even if they and did, they, I mean, it's just not. Ten, it's yeah there are, it's there are just not there are in its entirety a couple of small not like head nods um of little jokes that they make that if you've seen toy story and are familiar with it you know you you'll see that and go oh that's oh, oh sure yeah like how 
Buzz doesn't have uh Buzz doesn't have like a laser on his suit at sure. the beginning of the movie. JJ. He can't oh, shoot yes. the he can't shoot the fake laser beam that he has in Toy Story. But by the end of the movie he has the laser beam. Sure. So so whatever. I mean those are I little mean, nods, like, I guess, but like it If that if that's the case though, why didn't they just name it like something else and make a new movie right why why base it on toy story at all then right yeah i don't know i did not watch it and think it didn't need to be made i thought it was very nice okay i i'm also not the big pixar fan on this podcast so that's fine fair i mean people like what they like right i mean and the style of movie that is a pixar movie is this movie as well yes that is true so if you're not a Pixar person, which a lot of people are not, uh, a lot of more people are. <laughs> I mean, look, the movie I think did well, so you know, I I can be the minority here. I wouldn't necessarily say anyone needs to rush to the theater to see it. I don't know, Michael, if you thought differently. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know that there's anything that would require it to be seen on the big screen. Like no. if you just wanted to have it a family cute. movie night at home. Yeah. Once it comes out on Disney Plus and stream it. I think it's it's mostly... Uh, I struggle to put it into the Pixar categories of what if blank had feelings. Uh, other, <laughs> other than maybe yeah. what what if men had feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's, but there's a good... What if, what if I have feelings in the future? How's yeah. that? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, this movie jj suffers from uh disc discovery itis maybe in the future if oh, they no. if they think about making a sequel or a spin-off which the ending certainly implies they might did you stay all the way to the end wait there were which... three there were three scenes during the credits oh no i only saw one. Oh uh, yeah well okay so, so have, i saw the one with the laser the two. well i saw the one with the laser grid yep that was the first one. Yes. The second more? one. Okay. The second one. I'll, I'll just tell you what the second one is and sure. you can look up the third one. The second one cut back to the robot still giving directions to how to get to the other facility. Okay. Just just tell me the third one. I don't care. So the third one cuts to, to space uh, and you see Zerg floating there and his eyes light up. Oh, no. Sh- that was always going to happen. <laughs> there was yeah. no chance he was dead. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just a trope in all movies. The sure. Ex- yeah. The explosion knocks your camera and the hero and everyone away. Right. And that's all. That's it. That yep. there was no chance Zerg wasn't dead. And that doesn't necessarily change the fact that the feeling at the end of it is this is set for a spinoff if we want to make one. Because oh, the yeah. ending, the ending is the new Space Ranger core launching off into space. So the yeah, problem. Exactly. So- the problem they're going to have, though, is that, J.J., um, when you travel close to the speed of light, uh, you're actually yeah, traveling you, uh, You're traveling into the future. You don't age. Everyone else does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is the main conceit of the film. It is a very large part of the, sh- of the movie. Okay. Um, if they do a spinoff sort of like series thing or a show and these people are traveling all over the galaxy doing hyperspeed, they're going to have to keep that in mind as people around them all age. Or you just get around it by having them explore like near space. Or they invent the thing and then there's no more problem. Right. Right. Just like they did on all the Star Trek shows we didn't like, Andy. <laughs> I'm just saying, off the top of my head, I think to myself, if there's a spinoff of this, this is going to be a problem. That's all I'm saying. The The use of it in the movie is good. Basically, um, it becomes a story about, like, uh, he's kind of like a little Captain Ahab, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. The you know he has his he has his white whale that he's chasing, and life passes him by while he's chasing it. Yep. Yeah, that's that the move. That's basically what the movie's about. There, JJ. Okay. Uh, I was uh, 
started talking about Captain Ahab, and I was thinking about that line from Star Trek First Contact from the lady who never actually read the book. Yeah, I never actually read <laughs> and it. And Picard quotes it at him, at her, and she's like, I never read it. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you got me. I think uh, we should get back on the train we really fell off of uh, after we spent all of our brain power doing um, Shinji getting the robot. Uh, we uh, had, we had, yeah, we had talked about getting into the Star, uh, the Star, Star Trek, Trek movies. movies and ranking them up like we did the Star Wars movies. Be just for fun. Obviously, everyone disagrees. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just what we like the best. And then we t- say why. Uh, I have but to rewatch some of those Star Trek movies, good, though. Good <laughs> Lord, is First Contact going to be near the top? Yeah, and some of those other ones are so movie. bad. Assimilate this. <laughs> How can you not rank a movie near the top with that? You know, I like what we did with Star Wars, where they were all banded into groups, right? Because like Star Trek uh, Five is going to go and like the they went to see God <laughs> groups. <laughs> you know, didn't they yeah. also do that in Star Trek One? Wasn't it the uh, kind of uh, the God came to the... see them in Star Trek One, sir? Yeah. isn't the uh isn't the rule about the star trek movies was like the, supposed the to odd be, ones are good the, or sorry the odd ones the are bad the, even, the, odd, yeah, the odd ones, ones are, bad. are bad and the even ones are good right yeah that kind of dies i think with generations to be honest yeah because, i think that only applied to the the, the numbered six yeah because I think I think, generations isn't as good as you think on a rewatch first contact is better for sure right uh, and then insurrection always, is we, not good we can only solve this by f- <laughs> watching them and you admitting you're wrong and that Generations is fine, actually. Oh, I don't think it's bad. It's, it's better than <laughs> all of the odd numbers. Okay, so if you Star ranked one. off the top of your head all the odd ones, Generations has to be at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's better than five, three, and one, for sure. Although, I mean, three is fine. But And then yeah, what do you got? You've got... Better. After Generations is First Contact. After First Contact is Insurrection. Yeah, that one's not great. And then you've got Nemesis. Nemesis. I think that's right. Nemesis is fine-ish, but creates a lot of plot holes in the rest of TNG era stuff. Nemesis isn't awesome either, but, you know, I think it's better than Insurrection. Hey, you know, they got Tom Hardy into a movie. Uh, Yeah, true. I don't know. Then you've got the Kelvin verse and it's just all all beastie boys oh, yeah, all the time. Do we have to watch those too? Uh, yes, it's required. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think we should do it. All right, that was a yeah. weird sidetrack. That's, lo- that's a long process, man. Those are a lot <laughs> of movies. Okay. All right. Well, we could take it in chunks. Like we could do the originals, rank them, do the next ones, then rank them against the original. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's doable. Oh, okay, uh, let's let's talk about it more often. But this is I don't know. Lightyear, anything more on Lightyear? Uh, can you agree with me that socks is the best part of the movie? I I uh, I forgot <laughs> because I I fell asleep. Uh, but I meant to put in the group chat that uh, I have now met the only good cat, <laughs> and, it's, and it's and it is socks. I wanted socks with the uh, Terminator eye from the future. Oh, which is absolutely a reference to Terminator, by the way. Yes. Uh, uh, So, JJ, (laughs) Buzz goes through some trauma and they decide that they have this thing that will help him. And it's a cat. And they can't. But it's a robot cat that's basically a supercomputer and also a Swiss Army knife. (laughs) That okay. has a U- USB for a tail. <laughs> He's great. I he's, I loved his I loved his unboxing where he pulls a he pulls a mouse out of the box, but it's actually a like a toy mouse with a long tail on it. Uh-huh. Just the parody of unboxing a new computer. Yeah, he he accidentally hits his head, JJ, and he has to reset his lights so that he can light a path for everybody to see. And one of the lights is a laser that he starts chasing accidentally. Very cute. Yes, it, socks is cute. I love that he hairballs up a uh, a welding torch. torch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, oh, he man. provides he provides almost all the comic relief. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Taika's in this movie with his that's silly, no, that's true. That's true. With his yeah. pen, his pen, <laughs> his pen. Every five minutes with the pen. Um, there's a lot of good comic relief in the movie. It's very lighthearted. The thing I would say about it as we leave it is I'm not sure who it was made for. Um, and I mean that because Pixar movies have an audience generally, and it's either kids or adults. Like this inside, one, I, inside out is not for kids, right? Yeah, not really. But Toy Story one sure is. I don't know. Yeah, I I, think, I would say, I would say this one divides, and the first is. half, the first half is for adults, and then when he when he comes back to the planet for the last time, then it switches and becomes more for kids. Yeah, I think the it was interesting though because I took a seven year old. Uh, uh, one that I own <laughs> uh, to the film and the complexities of uh, spoilers still uh, as we have passed the 10 minute mark <laughs> the complexities of let's say time travel were a little lost on uh, her so yeah. even the part that is just straight storytelling for kids might not be that easy so just if FYI if you're taking kids to it it's not entirely a kids movie uh and definitely not the beginning uh much will be lost okay um ivan also very funny hmm. ivan the autopilot ivan the autopilot who kind of looked like uh no nah, he didn't look like a steam deck this is a bad transition steam deck <laughs> <laughs> i continue to think um I wish that I could play Aiden on a Steam Deck. It does seem like that kind of a game. Uh, yeah. It's Steam Deck verified as of just a couple of days ago. Yeah, but I don't have a Steam Deck, Michael. Yeah, I'm details. Just, that's, that's, the, that's the problem <laughs> with this sentence. It's not that it... Yeah. You but and I, most people, so you know, don't feel too bad on that front. Do you think that we're getting closer to... Um, somebody figuring out how to get windows working on that thing so i can play the xbox game pass on there it it works i don't think there's any kind of okay stuff just works man i think okay. like it's entirely possible the xbox game stuff works natively on their proton thing even i don't know i'm not oh, like maybe. researching all the forums has anyone uh tried the new deck verified i think it's deck verified i don't know i don't know how to look it up uh, Shredder's Revenge that is also on Game Pass? Not yet. Uh, I've seen okay. some people play it and say that it's pretty rad, but I have not right. played it. All right. I will report back because I might play it tonight. Um, can I talk about a game? Are you guys into hearing about a game for a little while? Do we talk about games on, on this? this? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we talked about a movie. Michael was into it. JJ really wasn't. Talked about a Steam Deck. Everyone kind of hates it. We talked about Windows. I don't know. Where are we at in our game playing interest here? Let's do it. Okay. I think this is a game that you guys actually may want to hear about. Uh, and it also is something I wish I could have played on my Steam Deck. Um, If you liked Auden, have either of you heard of the game Spiritfarer? Yes. I know the name. I've I've heard of it. Okay. Do you know anything about it? I mean, off the top of your head? Uh, I mean, I know a decent amount about it. Do you want me to spoil a bunch of stuff or I have played it in its entirety. Okay. So, you know more than me then. Okay. <laughs> but I know the like general conceit of the game. Well, give me your thoughts on it before we get going cuz then I can maybe confirm or deny what your opinions are. So, I mean, I don't have any opinions. I haven't played it. Um, okay. Yeah, sure. But the, or, I don't know, more opinion. Anyway, whatever. What do opinions mean anyway? Who knows what that means? Yeah. Uh, you are JJ, a opinions person mean everything. who takes, you're a person who takes the souls of the dead or something like souls of things and like help people finish their like business so that they can go to wherever else they're going. Okay. 
I don't know how. Do you know I don't know how gameplay really. Uh, there's a boat and you build sure. stuff. Yes. Uh huh. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, maybe this will be a little bit spoilery. Uh, I don't know if it's a trigger warning situation, but it is about death. So we'll just say that up front. Uh, if you have a hard time confronting death, don't play Spirit Fair. Uh, the th- and we could start with the the gameplay. So you saw the boat. There's a gigantic boat, as in fair Spirit Fairer, as in fairyman. But you're actually a woman named Stella. Stella meaning star. Stars play a big role in the game. Um, you have a boat because you need to ferry people around in what is ostensibly purgatory. Uh, what's the correct... Uh, kind of like allegorically defined as an ocean. Right? Mm-hmm. And the... The ocean is populated by islands, and the islands represent more than just places. They are places, and some of them have very distinct, uh, like, designs. Like, one of them is very much like a Japanese island. Another one is Manhattan. Another one is um, a rural mining place. So, that kind of thing, right? But more than that, um, they are also about kind of stages of people's lives so like the 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 just shipping yard is more like people's work ethic uh so if you have when you have uh things to do they'll be related to these types of islands you have to travel around in your boat on the ocean and you can choose to fast travel or you can choose to sail if you sail there's a fishing mini game of course there is Mm -hmm. not a jrpg without fishing or apparently a boat soul fairy game i don't know so i'll get to the end of this and we can decide what type of game it is uh before we leave our boat and discuss what we do with spirits which is what they call uh passengers on your boat on your boat you need to build things like a kitchen uh orchard a each spirit has a house each each passenger on your ship has a house you need to build those things um you need to build sheep pens you need to build vegetable gardens you need to build uh forges you need to build glass works you need to be- <laughs> you know what i mean there's like a bazillion buildings to build uh, they're not shops or anything like that. They're just places where you can manage or generate resources. So you either get resources from them or you change resources to other things. So like you turn ore into iron or whatever. Um, and the building's purposes are to get you more resources to do more things like build more buildings or advance stories or uh, do other stuff. The kitchen being one of the most important. Gotta in those food. buildings what's that say that again gotta cook food well you have to cook food for a specific reason we'll get to it in a second but um in those rooms and stuff becomes a i don't know jj maybe you've called it a plate spinning game before or that is man- that is a type of game management sim maybe is better because you can't crash the plates as much in this game but like you constantly need to water your plants in your vegetable garden. You need to remember to um, always be sailing through storms so you can catch lightning bugs. You need to sail to this other guy to upgrade your ship to make it bigger or to unlock a speed upgrades or things like that. Um so maybe it's more management than plate spinning. It's, yeah, it's a town management sim, but your town floats. And there's no one in your town specifically to help you. The town, you're managing yourself most of the time. Um, because on your boat are what they call spirits. And spirits are basically quest givers. 
that travel with you and they are triggered by your um, advancement of the management sim, I guess, in certain ways. Some are not. Uh, and you have to maintain them. This is the plate spinning part. You have to maintain them in as happy mood as you can, which sometimes means you need to get a spirit off of your boat because they fight with another spirit. Some spirits are related to each other, so they either like each other or don't, related in terms of their backstory. Um, some spirits are annoyed by loud music. Some spirits play loud music. This kind of thing. Um, but all of them get hungry. And if you don't feed them, they become quite ornery. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. reasonable. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Each Just like spirit, real people, I guess. <laughs> and then, then you get into the plate spinning of each spirit has two types of food they like and two types of food they hate. You can feed them the types of food they like, but you can't feed them the same thing every single day. You have to feed them different things every day. So you have to try and maintain their happiness levels, all that kind of stuff. You have to worry about the spirit's feelings as much as you do have to worry about the questing, right? Um, there's light platforming in the game. Every island you need to jump on and around things. Uh, it's got, I mean this literally, it's got Metroidvania type powers that you have to go around and get. Like you need to go get double jump. Otherwise, you will yep. not advance the game. Yep, that's a Metroidvania right there. Yep. Yeah, um, and you can only get that by going around and finding different things and all sorts of stuff, you know. Um, it's it's very strange, and you become weirdly attached to the people on your boat because some of them are there a short time and some of their, um, them are ver there a very long time. Um, the, the spirits are people. It becomes very clear. That's not really as big a spoiler as it sounds. Um, the real trick that the game lays on you later on is that the spirits are all related to you. You've met them all before. And that uh, they're not quite dead. In fact, um, you are remembering helping them move on when they were sick in life. Huh. Okay. And it is, and it is in fact them who are ferrying you on as you are ending your life. Hmm. It's uh, a cool twist. It yeah. is a cool twist. Yeah, I, and it's it's cool. I mean, that to me was made it all worthwhile. Honestly, I think. Uh, and you, you kind of figure that out midway through the game. So the rest of it becomes about how actually you want to do things. There's interesting achievements in the game. Um, if you play it on Steam, I guess, you can cheat and finish all the achievements. If you play it on any other platform, you can't. There are choices you have to make with spirits about how you want to tell them things. If you want to lie to them, if you don't want to lie to them, that sort of stuff. It's a little slow in the middle, but I liked it quite a bit. And if you liked Aiden and running around doing quests and seeing the game progress and building a town like that, Spirit Fair might be up your alley. You know? Mm. Um, it The density, I think, of the quests in Aodin is accomplished by them being a lot of them. So far I have found that Isha basically has the story and everyone else is just sort of filler. I don't know if that's wrong. I think you get more as it goes not, along. Not for it's not wrong for where you are in the game. Yeah, okay. that part is definitely true. In Spirit Fair they all seem to have the quests are more defined because they are coming from specific people with specific stories and those specific stories are the quests, right? There it's, it's still some fetch questing and there's definitely spirits that are not on your boat that can give you quests. Like I did, I had to run uh, vinyl records around different islands to promote a band. <laughs> okay, great. 
But at each of those islands, one of the spirits on my boat needed to do something. So was it really additional? Not really. I don't know. Um, I, th- I think I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. I think they're finally done adding to the game. Uh, unlike Elden Ring, uh, due to the ending of this game, you can't do like a save at the end and continue on. And so the DLC... Like it, it doesn't, doesn't let you, or... Uh, your save point is just before the end of the game, let's say. Ah, uh, so there's a... Yeah, gotcha. there's a point of no return. Yeah. And so the DLC, I probably will never play that I didn't play. Um, but I've heard it's good. They added a few more characters. And uh, they did a lot of quality of life stuff. I had a crash or two that they eventually fixed later. Um but I was really taken by the like setting and the theme. I've been waiting to talk about this game for a little while. I actually played it a long time ago. And I didn't really know if it was just me that would like this kind of thing. But if you guys like that Aiden game, you might like this. Honestly, it doesn't have combat. That's kind of the thing that you're missing here. There's no... There's a lot of challenges, like platforming challenges that are very light instead of combat there's things you have to go get and do like there's these weird jellyfish that fly in the sky and you need to jump around and and touch them so they explode that's like that's like the that's combat you know (laughs) so very light yeah um it's, it's definitely more of the like just questing and town building situation so know that going in but um my boat was very large and very fast by the end i mean that's what the any good management game that's the the benefit at the end right you get like all the sweet stuff and makes it easier yeah the fishing game is really good uh i I, oh speaking of the aiden fishing game kind of interesting it yeah, definitely... it's, it's a unique implementation of a fishing game. Yeah, exactly. I I know, don't know that I've seen a fishing game like that one before. I think I have. This one in Spirit Fair is um it's like a tension band. So mm, okay. there's there's an optimal zone that you want to have the tension in the rod on. And the fish can pull it in or out of that zone. And then reeling can pull the fish into or out of that zone. And you have to kind of like, much like those, you see those deep sea people where they like reel, 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 reel. And they drop the, drop the rod back down and then pull it backwards. Yeah. That's like the fishing games in, or the fishing mini games in Yakuza. And like, oh, cold steel is not quite like that, but Yakuza definitely is similar to that one. Yeah. So, so, like, every single fish in the game is in a category. And the category, you can learn how they pull. So, like, if you, oh, don't, interesting. if you don't want to catch a crab, by the end of the game, you will know what a crab's uh, tension pattern looks like. And you can just let it go before you try to spend all that time catching it. Some fish take quite a bit of time to catch. That's a smart way to That's do that. That's a nice time save. Yeah. So you'll know you have a lot of those other games. It's just like, yeah, bro, you got to spend that time and then you Start get reeling. Whatever. Yep. No. And so like, you'll know you have one of the fish that you've been trying to get for a long time because you're in a very long, very hard game. And you're like, ah, it's a blue fin, you know, it's gotta be a blue fin because this pattern is the one that I fail every time because the tension thing is so small. Uh, it's a good, yeah. it's a good fishing mini game. Um, geez, that's that. I don't know. I expected to talk about it more. Ha 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 ha. Joking. I need to stop talking about it because it's just been me talking for 20 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh boy. Um, I mean, it's not, is the spirit of the emperor still with you there? There they go. There's my spirit fairer to Warhammer transition. The, the, the impossible uh, transition. Uh, 
you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, according to the lore, the spirit of the emperor guides us all. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm still really enjoying the game. Uh, I've done a few boss fights. Uh, He's talking about which, 40k Chaos Gate, in case we didn't didn't know. Yeah, people. Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Daemon Hunters. Right, Demon because Hunter. the original Chaos Gate is like 10 years old. Yes. Uh, that game's on GOG, by the way, if people want to play that. The original. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. I, I didn't remember having boss fights in the XCOM games that I've played. Uh, oh. But this game definitely has boss fights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's been pretty interesting. The A really nice break from the like enemies that I've gotten used to fighting at this point. Sure. Um, and yeah, it, very unique mechanics. Like, unique enough that it's like, oh, this person, I brought the wrong people here. I'm super duper dead. <laughs> oh, no. You're like, Ooh, I didn't uh, bring the psyker. Well, I mean, like, everyone's a psyker. But like, yeah, I didn't bring the, like, full warp team or I didn't bring the, like, full armor bypass team or the <laughs> team that does like the uh you know the like stack all the damage on one guy and crit the hell out of people or whatever like i didn't you know you 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 min max your characters you know as you can as you level them up and then you you bring a balanced squad in and you realize no 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 this was not about balance today <laughs> this one called for specifically this thing mm-hmm. um but you know that's why you got saves right yeah, save scum. Do it. Uh, yeah, and look, man, uh, I didn't play on Iron Man mode for a reason. Uh, <laughs> and you want to have fun? I, yeah, exactly. And I I do not find it fun when I show up to a battle with a balanced team and uh, am told, no, my friend, what you <laughs> needed was a specific <laughs> set of skills that you do not have here. But otherwise, like the game has been fun. And those fights are still fun when you have a team that has a hope. Uh, sure. it's but you know it's just uh demoralizing when you bring the wrong people and get you know wrecked for it club club hammered i think yeah. everything uh everything games workshop is currently on sale on gog during the summer i don't know sale that i've ever they're doing i don't know that i've ever played the original chaos gate oh that one is on sale for 249 well, that Good is deal. inexpensive yeah I mean, I mean, everything that I see here pretty much is on sale. Yeah. Weird. Uh, maybe uh, just, yeah. Summer sales, man. Cool. Um, Jeez. Yeah. Michael. What have I been playing? Um... Since finishing Aiden, I've gone back to Skywalker Saga. Oh, Lego, oh, Lego. Yeah, it, cool? uh, it's good. They they put out. I think they recently put out a patch, and it seems a little bit more stable. Okay, um, which is good. Yeah. But yeah, I'm still making my way through it. I am in Return of the Jedi at this point. So yeah, which story did you did you start at Episode Four or One? Yes, I started at Four. Okay. So I've done four and five. I'm in, I'm in the Ewok village, and just doing some doing some side quests before continuing with the story mission. Man, when I got into the Ewok village, my frame rate fell off a cliff. <laughs> oh no! On what platform? PC. Oh no! You, even I, with the beastly rig, it just was like, no man, uh, uh-uh. uh, not not rendering this many frames. I can't do it. I think a part of it, and I don't know if I don't know if they all show up for you on on screen, but they put um, if you depending on the power ups you've unlocked, they put little targeting icons around the perimeter of your screen that point to certain types of objectives and items. And the Ewok village just is an explosion of them. Yeah, I I don't know what it was. It was just like the frame rate got so low we had to like okay let we're i'm clicking to go on with the story button i can't i can't look at this anymore not not all the way slideshow but it was getting there wow i mean like you know i also didn't attempt to like you know there's like it was at night they had all the little fires out on everywhere all over 
I also didn't attempt to like, you know, turn down the graphics or anything because it's never been a problem thus far. Yeah. But fun game. Fire Warriors on sale for a dollar fifty. Do you remember that from like PlayStation Two? No, I don't recall that one. That's a that's a, another Warhammer game. Ah. Wow. Okay, we've gotten this old, guys. Uh, hmm? do you know who didn't get old? JJ knows no. the answer to this one. Come on. You got it. You know this transition. What? You can do it. No. Just what? Fernando Alonso. Ah. Uh, did not get yes. old. P2, man. Uh, crazy we're talking about F1. It's the end of the podcast where uh, Michael has to listen to us talk about F1 uh, <laughs> from Canada. Michael, the guy who retired and came back, got second place. In a car oh. that should not get second place. Second place in the rain. Yeah, qualifying. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. And not second place in the race, though. Nope, sure not. Oh, well. He did did quite well, though, all considered. Yeah. But I think the real story <laughs> is if you're a fan of Haas, just pain. What? what the heck? Schumacher's in the points and his car blows up again. Yep. Not his fault at all. Just stopped working and then okay so i am not an f1 i'm an f1 neophyte that's that's the right way to say this <coughs> f1 neophyte i didn't watch during hamilton's heyday i can watch two cars collide and not trust myself to know whose fault it is i can feel like i know whose fault it is but i can't know all the rules and the split second decision making and say with confidence like people on the internet can that I am right uh, mm -hmm. and that this person whoever I like because that's the only person <laughs> that they're going to talk about should not get a penalty and the other person should but some it people is, did it mention, is a sport right people still treat it like a sport so yeah, you gotta know yeah, that yeah. going in yeah some people did mention that a less damaged front wing or a more damaged front wing was carried by Hamilton to a race win and he was not black flagged for it. Yeah. They, uh, Ocon who was behind Magnuson got on the radio and said something about it. Uh, and a bit later the FIA black and orange flagged him, which requires it. It's a, it's like a direction to the driver to come into the pits to fix some mechanical issue. And yeah, it was kind of lame. Pretty, pretty lame. Pretty questionable. And of course that ruined his race and sent him straight to the back. Right. Yep. And, and it's so, not like a black and orange flag is not like a, you have to fix this eventually it's pit now and fix this or you're disqualified. I see. Okay. So like if you get shown that usually it's for like, hey, your tire is about to fly off or like this piece is like dangling off your car and could fly off and hit another driver in the head or a fan in the head, right? Like they do it for safety reasons. And ostensibly, that's what they will say this was about. But it's pretty marginal when you look at it. I I kind of feel it was pretty weak. And yeah, but, you know, was what it was. Yeah, Uh did you get a clear idea in your head about what happened other than it just being two cars whacking each other accidentally? I, cause it is the, another, let me just put out there. It is another Hamilton cra crashing, crashing into K mag again. I mean, I, it looked like a racing incident to me. I didn't have a like strong feeling after it happened I, that like I, someone was obviously in the wrong. Yeah. It, and I said it like Hamilton crashed into, and I, I don't know that that's what happened, but like, the two of them collided again. It was, and every and, and time like, it happens, it ruins K Mag's race. And it's not like, to be fair, it's not he like P five like ran into each other like it was NASCAR. It, it was like <laughs> destruction they, derby style. They, they brushed each other's sides, dude. He, barely. He right, didn't even barely. touch his tire this time. He just tapped him. And it would have been, you know, it. 
you know, a two millimeters to the left and there's no problem here, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't know. I, I didn't see, like, Lewis wasn't egregiously taking the space away from him. He wasn't, like, actively turning into Lewis. Uh, so, I don't know, man. Again, I, I agree with you that, like, I'm not a professional race car driver. I don't know how this stuff works when you're going 100 miles an hour. The rules say you have to leave space. There was space for a car. You just got a little too close. Yeah, I really... I I know that, of course, we talked in the past that Schumacher's not in danger. But, like, Magnussen is, is in danger. And he keeps getting these good qualifyings and then nothing in the race to show for it. It's starting to mm-hmm. hurt my heart. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, it. This isn't. He's had two years of finishing at the back of the grid, so. Yeah. You know, the the problem is we had hope this year. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder but, if they'll know, talk I mean, about if they upgraded the cars and stuff, and that's why they were doing so well. I uh, part of this is that uh, like <laughs> Leclerc wind. and a couple other things. Yeah, yeah, that like uh, you know, the, so, the massive uh, penalties, Michael. We've talked in the past about the uh, the caps on yeah, yeah. Uh, on spending and stuff, and there's also caps uh-huh. on there's caps on parts. Well, uh, okay. one of the first major we ran out of allowance for parts happened this weekend to someone who is ostensibly in contention for first place. Ooh, he I feel had like so much now. Yeah, I don't think so now. He had to replace some parts in his motor to get it running again. They said, well, that's too many parts. Ten and it, place penalty to start the race. And it wasn't Ooh. like, to be. let's be fair, it wasn't some parts. It was like most of the engine. Most of the engine, <laughs> yeah. Most of the el- engine then, electronics, I guess. And then he was only going to have a ten place penalty. And there's more than ten cars. So like, if he had qualified in second and took ten places, well, now you're in the middle. That's not too bad. But then they were like, uh, actually, you know, this turbocharger is not so good either. And they're like, all right, that's the back, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, But there is something like, you know, part of as the season goes on, like this is a marathon to get a victory. And all the teams will start doing this. But yeah, they will start taking like- their losses strategically in races where they know they're kind of going to do not so good due to whatever reasons, you know. They're like, oh, okay, like our car isn't good at this particular track. We are probably going to get like middling finish or, you know, less likely to do well. What if we take a 15 place grid penalty and start from the back? (laughs) And, Mm. you know, so I I expect this year we'll see a lot of it if they don't change the rules because, yeah. Oh, bad news when a big team is like this already. We have five minutes to discuss the rules porpoising yeah huh how come they back down okay so uh to give to give michael a recap michael the cars are bouncing wildly up and down so bad that people have to take painkillers some drivers are having nerve damage like massive fast vertical oscillation right the car is like slamming into the ground and bouncing back up over and over and over really quickly and it gets worse the faster you go and they basically have concluded that the cars are riding too low and the technology is not good enough to prevent them from hitting the ground. Well, so that's the thing. That's the thing that they're tra- saying, right? And so mm-hmm. the the rules committee came out and said the drivers asked us to step in. As of this weekend, if by the end of practice your vertical oscillations are not under this exact limit, you must go to a higher ri- ride height, back to the original ride height that we had last year. Uh, so they had so that's they, not the uh, the the thing is is that like they say they're going to be monitoring it and teams will be instructed to change things if it becomes dangerous because there are accelerometers in the car they can sure, tell yeah. right yeah uh but then we get to specify the actual, what that limit is very clearly right. so then we get to the actual race weekend and uh whoops uh we didn't mean this weekend well, because there's not enough time, right? Like to define a number. Like, thankfully, they didn't try to just throw some number out there. That would have made everyone pissed. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're going to gather data and then find a safe value that, like, all teams will have to comply to. Essentially. I didn't. 
I don't hate the, de the design, which is basically another rule, right? Vertical oscillations must be limited to X. And then the teams well, that have figured it out is, are fine. Yeah. The thing is, is that like if they force all teams to raise right height, it helps a bunch of teams that, that are, are bad. Doing poorly. <laughs> right. And so, right. you know, everything's a game, right? But the important thing here is that like this is only a problem because of the rules about how the suspension works. Oh. If they allowed active active suspensions like your car and most modern cars have, this would not be a problem. But those are banned in F1. So, ah. Because active suspension essentially turns into traction control very quickly. And that's <laughs> like a really slippery slope there and they don't want that. So it's like a what do you allow kind of game and like i feel you know, it, i feel like this is a, a perfect point for the my 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions me 100 percent. and to be <laughs> fair like ground effect era existed before at f1 a long time ago but then they banned it very quickly because it was seen as like unfair mm. because it's like oh you're doing not what we expected here in terms of airflow and like no uh but this was a problem back then too the problem was well, the thing is that they banned the underbody airflow stuff before this porpoising became a horrible issue for the drivers, right? Right. So who so, knows? Yeah. Hmm. I like I said, it's the technology exists to fix this. Like the F one teams have it; they could do it. You know, later snap their fingers, it's done. But the problem is, like, they don't want that, and so then, what do you do? That like because Andrew's right; it does. The drivers are in danger, like physical pain. Uh, and the teams aren't going to step in because they have a competitive advantage to not step and the, in. And what it's, uh, Gasly said, I'm not going to not drive the car because somebody else would. Right. It's like, right. do you want to do you want to drive? Then well, I mean, you will accept it's bad. Pain. I That's mean, it's bad, option. right? Like George Russell, like had to have his heart monitored from chest pains. It, Hamilton is like. Dude, there's a video physically of crippled getting out of, the get car. out of his car like, yeah he like needs people helping him to stand up oh yeah so the the main problem that they're having actually is another issue uh sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast and so red bull actually it sounds like slowed down their car slightly to fix this issue and yeah what has occurred is that during the straights the Red Bull cars can hit the gas. And while all the other teams are on the straights, their drivers have to slow down or they will be physically murdered by the porpoising. It, mm. There's more to it than that. There's like, I can go link a video to you guys later. Um, but it's like a bunch of stuff related to like aerodynamics and how the underbody airflow works. And it's essentially causing like the suction gets so strong under the car that it slams the back of the car down. And then that breaks the suction, and so then it pops back up, and then does that over and over tons of times, right? Mm -hmm. The issue is you just have to manage that flow really, really, really carefully. And some people got good, right? And some people did not. Yep. Well, that's uh, that's enough science for today. We had a lot of science talk and a lot of uh, feelings talk. It's a good podcast. If you have science or feelings in your life. Anyone with science or feelings, go ahead and write in. <laughs> Title the email. We were gamers. Silence, science or feelings. Yeah, so we know which one it is that you have and are talking <laughs> about. Uh, but we're also on the internet uh, at We Were Gamers on our social media, Facebook, yeah, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, yeah, find us on all those places. Find us on your favorite podcasting app. Subscribe to us there. And also on YouTube at We Were Gamers uh, on there. All one word. I like that. I think that Kit or Ken sent us the Lego and was like, do you like how they changed the ship? And it ends up being like, actually, they didn't change the ship. That's a totally different ship. Hmm. You know? Yep. Uh, that's a kind of a cool little thing. Because then, then the ship at the end looks like the, the ship from the cart, from the uh, Toy Story carton packaging. Right. I like it. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. I thought it was going to be sad. I thought I was going to be really sad when socks fell on his head. Oh, yeah. They scared me. That they, they lost him altogether. 
yeah that it was gonna like factory reset him he's be like who are you who are you I'm like oh no but i i liked the direction that they chose to go instead the yeah. restoring a corrupted file yeah that was that was good that was a good direction um yeah, it was an interesting lesson film you know um I don't know that you would get the same storyline post twenty or pre twenty twenty. You know the moral of don't go it alone. Yeah, or you know that life is what happens while you're making other plans. Yeah, that's 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 a good ver- that's a better version. I don't get the impression that his friend uh, Alicia. Yes. Yeah had the same mentality which is the why i was saying like she was willing to accept the help of those around her and didn't put things on her shoulders as much as buzz did so like she let things happen that were other were other plans right yeah versus buzz with the more captain ahab i can't let this go i have to do this one thing It was yeah, cool that it was fault. socks. I need to fix the, yeah, it was cool that it was that, socks that fixed it too. I was like, oh, yeah, that solved the the crystal problem. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they do a uh, if they do a sequel as another movie or if they spin it off into a series because it they could go either way. It had a more series like ending, but the actors that play those characters are all too big to be doing a series, right. Um, yeah, the Zerg, not his father thing really puts it in a different category. Like, it seems like it needs to be films. I don't know. Like partway through, I had the realization Zerg isn't what they're trying to say. And so I was trying to piece together in in the back of my head. Okay. What else? What could it be? Oh, really? How did you have that? I don't know. It just, it, the thought popped into my head. I was like the robots the robots aren't just here because they're they're necessarily just because they're a conquering horde. Like I I had the thought there must be something to it. Oh, I wonder if when they every time they're saying Zerg, if that's like a corruption of something else. Well, so right, it was the knew, it was the V'ger moment. Yeah. So you knew the storyline that Zerg was his father. So I basically expected there to be some sort of time travel element to like his dad tried to show up to f- save them. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. How was that? It was good. I thought it was good enough. I didn't see yep. any ma- major problems with it. The no. hyperspace thing is going to be an issue later when they don't need the time no. travel element. Yeah. Okay. Time travel. Time travel is always a problem at some point. 